Hello students, in this video we'll give an example of a scalar conservation law where a shock develops. Let's consider, again, our scalar conservation laws. We'll have the ut plus h of u x is equal to zero. Here we're thinking of x as space, remember, x is space. T is time. Okay, excellent. And so now, of course, we want to look at particular instances of this. So one very f famous example of this, which we've studied in, in previous videos, is if h of u is one half u squared, right? That's a smooth convex function, right? So that's going to be important. Convexity and concavity are going to be important in later videos. So we're going to note that this one's going to be a convex function. Okay, excellent. All right, good. And so now, of course, what is h u sub x? h u sub x will just be a u and then a u x. Beautiful. And that means our scalar conservation law over here is u t plus u dot u x is equal to zero. And we know this equation is just Berger's equation. So Berger's equation, which we've said previously. When we just say Berger's equation, we solve with the method of characteristics. So let's just recap how we do that, right? So when we solve Berger's equation by the method of characteristics, what do we say? We say, okay, I have a dt over one, dt over one. These are my characteristic surfaces. Our dx over u, and then du over zero. And this forces, of course, u to be constant, u to be c1, right? So in other words, u, are, u is going to be constant along the other characteristics. And what are those characteristics? Those characteristics over here are going to be exactly, well, I have t u minus x is equal to c2, right? Or it doesn't matter. You can put this as a negative and a plus, right? And so I typically like that. And so our solution, therefore, u of x t can be implicitly defined as, as follows. As a function, phi capital of what? It's implicit on is x minus t u of x t, right? So once I specify the value of u and the initial data, that will tell me the line, so these lines over here, so once u is specified, once the initial data is specified, if I tell you what u is at time zero, well, that's great, because if u at time zero is known to you, then that will be a, the equation of this thing over here will just be a line. So in other words, it's gonna be constant along the lines, okay? So in other words, u is constant along characteristics, which are straight lines. Great, okay, excellent. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna specify a particular set of initial data, right? What I wanna do is I wanna say, let's consider phi of x zero, this situation over here, this particular example. I want it to be zero if x is greater than zero, okay? So in other words, there's no velocity over here when you're greater than zero. And I want it to be a fixed number u zero when x is less than zero. And then moreover, I want this u zero over here to be a positive number, okay? Excellent. So this is my initial data. So this initial data. And this initial data is going to generate a shock. Okay, let's see how that initial data generates a shock. Okay, well, let's draw the picture over here. So the picture makes it easy to see. Here's the x-axis, and then here's the t-axis, right? Now over here, when x is positive, what do you know? You know that the initial profile is zero. So there's no slope with t relative to x. So you get vertical lines over here. So in other words, your characteristics over here, your u is going up like this. u is equal to zero. These are your straight lines over here. u is equal to zero. u is equal to zero. All these are the values where u is equal to zero, okay? Something bad happens though, because let's think about this from the following perspective. What do we know over here? We know that what's gonna happen over here. Now these things over here have positive slope. So these things over here are gonna, the value of u is gonna be u zero over here. And what's gonna happen? Those characteristics are gonna cross, right? These characteristics are crossing. This is u equals u zero. In other words, there has to be, of course, u zero and zero are not the same because u zero is greater than zero, right? So what's happening over here is that these characteristics are crossing. That's bad news. That means the solution folds in over itself. It's not actually a solution. There's a gradient discontinuity. So what's happening over here in this configuration, we can see from drawing the characteristics, there's a shock dynamic somewhere over here. So now what we need to do, from, we have to revert to these ideas from the scalar conservation law. So let's recall, 
we have this rankin hugonio condition, rankin hugonio condition for C prime, the shock curve. And what's that condition? That condition is that C prime of t, the shock curve, has to be h u on the right side minus h u on the left side over what? Over u right minus u left, okay? Good. So what is this over here? So now let's fill in what this, this speed can, this ranking condition is going to be. So this ranking condition over here is going to be C prime of t is going to be these each have one half. So I have one half u r squared minus u l squared over u r plus u l. Excellent. And of course, what does that boil down to? That just boils down to simply just one half. This is one half. The u r minus u l cancels out. I should have one half u r plus u l. And of course, u r is going to be what? u r is going to be, the right limit is going to be 0. The left limit is going to be u 0 over 2. So you just have a u 0 over 2. Beautiful. So now we've just found the equation for the speed. So hence, what do we know? So hence, the shock, a little bit better, shock. occurs at what? Well, the where, where's the initial discontinuity? The initial jump starts at the origin, right? That's where things go bad. And then it starts at the origin. So you have xc, we could integrate this, and we have xc prime of t is going to be what? xc prime of t is going to be u0 over 2t plus a constant c0. But c0 is equal to 0 since it starts at the origin. So this is just going to be u0 over 2t. Beautiful. So this line u0 over 2t is where the shock comes into play. So what's going to happen is your solution looks like this now. So now we can redraw it in a much nicer form. Here's the t-axis. Here's the x-axis. Here's my shock curve. My shock curve is u0 over 2t. That's just a linear curve that goes up like this. There's our shock. And up to this shock, the value of u is what? The value of u is u is equal to 0 over here u is equal to 0 over here. And then over here, are the values u equals the positive value u0. So what's happening in the solution over here is you have a constant solution u0 up to this shock dynamic, right? And that shock dynamic happens when you get sent down to 0, right? So in other words, the, the discontinuity is propagating linearly along this line. And so this is an example, a very simple example, actually, where the shock is just a straight line, right? You can have more complex shock structures. You can actually have shocks intersecting shocks. And that gets into a very complex mathematical theory. It's not that you can't do it. It just becomes, very, it becomes much more complicated. But this is the basic principle, how you get a shock, right? If there's initially a jump discontinuity for a scalar conservation law, that jump discontinuity will propagate according to this Rankin-Hugonio condition. You can find, you can solve this different, you can solve this ODE, find that you have the speed of the shock, Right? Once you have the speed of the shock, you can integrate that to find out the, the, the location of the shock. Once the location of the shock is known, you can say, okay, up to the shock, these are the values u0 over there, and this will give me a what? This gives me over here, if I say, okay, well, now I have this, I know what the solution is implicitly. So now, this, of course, is constant over here, constant over here. It's going to satisfy the equation trivially, right? Because I know constant, constant derivatives are gone. It doesn't satisfy it in the classical sense. It satisfies it in the conservation sense, in the sense of the conservation law, right? So in other words, this will be a weak solution to the Burgers equation. Definitely not a strong solution because I don't have time derivatives. And that's fine. We've just given an example of a PDE where there's not a classical solution, but a weak solution still exists. And it should be clear that this is a weak solution because it clearly satisfies the initial data. And it clearly satisfies the PDE, except on the shock, right? Except where the shock happens, it doesn't satisfy the PDE. But that's okay, because the shock, relatively speaking, is a one-dimensional thing. Relative to the dimension of the surface, I have a one-dimensional uh, set of discontinuities uh, of one dimension. The co-dimension, it's less dimensional. So it's not a terrible thing. It's not the best thing in the world either. But it's a good example of how we can define a weak solution to a PDE using a conservation law. Thank you very much.